A disaccharide is the sugar formed when two monosaccharides are joined by glycosidic linkage. Like monosaccharides, disaccharides are simple sugars soluble in water. Three common examples are sucrose, lactose, and maltose. Disaccharides have 12 carbon atoms with the general formula carbon 12, hydrogen 22, oxygen 11. The differences in these disaccharides are due to atomic arrangements within the molecule. The joining of monosaccharides into a double sugar happens by a condensation reaction which involves the elimination of a water molecule from the functional groups only, breaking apart a double sugar into its two monosaccharides is also accomplished by hydrolysis with the help of enzymes. As building, the larger sugar ejects a water molecule, breaking it down consumes a water molecule. So these reactions are vital in metabolism. Each disaccharide is broken down with the help of enzymes such as sucrase, lactase, and maltase. Maltose as a disaccharide occurs to a limited extent in sprouting grains. It is formed most often by the partial hydrolysis of starch and glycogen. Maltose is about 30% as sweet as sucrose. The human body is unable to metabolize maltose or any other disaccharide directly from the diet because the molecules are too large to pass through the cell membranes of the intestinal wall. Therefore, an ingested disaccharide must first be broken down by hydrolysis reaction uh, into its two uh, constituent monosaccharide units. In the body, such hydrolysis reactions are catalyzed by enzymes, and in the case of maltose, it is the maltase enzymes. Uh, reducing sugar in biochemistry is any sugar that is capable of acting as a reducing agent because it has a free aldehyde group or a free ketone group. All monosaccharides in the nature are reducing sugars, along with some disaccharides, some oligosaccharides, and some polysaccharides. Now, maltose, out of all these, is a reducing sugar. Therefore, its two glucose molecules must be linked in such a way as to leave one anomeric carbon that can open to form an aldehyde group. The glucose units in maltose are joined in a head to tail fashion through an alpha linkage from the first carbon atom of one glucose molecule to the fourth carbon atom of the second glucose molecule. This is gonna help of course to form an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage which is gonna connect two glucose molecules with one another. The bond from the anomeric carbon of the first monosaccharide unit is directed downward, which is why this is known as an alpha glycosidic linkage. Sucrose, on the other hand, probably the largest selling pure organic compound in the world. It's also known as table sugar. Most of the sucrose sold commercially is obtained from sugarcane and sugar beets by evaporation of the water and recrystallization, of course. The sucrose molecule is unique among the common disaccharides in having an alpha-1-2 glycosidic linkage. This linkage gives sucrose certain characteristics that are quite different from those of maltose and lactose, the other two disaccharides. Sucrose exists in only one form, but in the solid state and in both in the solid state and in solutions. In addition, sucrose does not undergo reactions that are typical of aldehydes and ketones. Therefore, sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. 
the hydrolysis of sucrose through the action of, of the enzyme sucrase gives an equal mixture of glucose and fructose because fructose is sweeter than sucrose, the hydrolysis adds to the sweetening effect. Bees carry out this reaction when they make honey. Sucrose is converted to fat when the caloric intake exceeds the body's requirements. There are some clear differences in absorption, digestion, and metabolism between fructose and glucose. The liver is the major site of fructose metabolism. In the liver, fructose can be converted to glucose derivatives and stored as liver glycogen, which is good if you are physically active. However, the liver's ability to do this is limited, which isn't so good. Indeed, with very high single serving doses of fructose, the fructose that arrives at the liver can easily be converted to fat. Excess intakes of fructose can lead to the new creation of fats in the liver, as well as a short circuiting of our energy balance and body fat regulating systems. Lactose is known as milk sugar because it occurs in the milk of humans, cows, and other mammals. In fact, the natural synthesis of lactose occurs only in memory tissue, whereas most other carbohydrates are plant products. Human milk, for example, contains about 7.5% lactose, and cow's milk contains about 4.5%. This sugar is one of the lowest ranking in terms of sweetness, being about one sixth as sweet as sucrose, the table sugar. Lactose is produced commercially from, uh, from whey, a byproduct in the manufacture of cheese. It is important, as we all know, as infant food and in the production of penicillin. Lactose is a reducing sugar composed of one molecule of galactose and one molecule of glucose joined by a beta-1,4 glycosidic bond. These two monosaccharides are obtained from lactose by hydrolysis or the catalytic action of the enzyme lactase. A certain bacteria can metabolize lactose forming lactic acid as one of the products. This reaction is responsible for souring of milk. Lactose makes up about 40% of an infant's diet during the first year of life. Infants and small children have one form of the enzyme lactase in their small intestines and can digest the sugar easily. However, adults usually have a less active form of the enzyme and about 70% of the world's adult population has some deficiency in its production. As a result, many adults experience a reduction in the ability to hydro hydrolyze lactose to galactose and glucose in their small intestine. For some people, the inability to synthesize sufficient enzymes increases with age, and this is a genetic disorder which is known as lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance, as I said, is a digestive disorder caused by the inability to digest lactose, and it is a genetic disease. People with lactose intolerance don't make enough of the enzyme lactase, which is needed to digest the lactose. The lactose enzyme, uh, the lactase enzyme is needed to break lactose down into glucose and galactose, which can then be absorbed into the bloodstream and used for energy. Without sufficient lactase, lactose moves through our gut undigested and causes digestive symptoms. In people with lactose intolerance, some of the unhydrolyzed lactose passes into the colon, where it tends to draw water 
from the in interstitial fluid into the intestinal lumen by osmosis. At the same time, intestinal bacteria may act on the lactose to produce organic acids and gases. The buildup of water and bacterial decay products leads to abdominal distension, cramps, and diarrhea, which are uh, symptoms of the condition. There are two types of lactose intolerance. The first one is primary lactose intolerance, which is the most common form of it. It is caused usually by a decrease in lactase product production with age, so that lactose becomes poorly absorbed. This form of lactose intolerance may be partially caused by genes because we know that it is more common in some populations than others. A secondary lactose intolerance, on the other hand, is rare. It is caused by illness, such as a stomach bug or more serious issues like celiac disease. This is because inflammation in the gut in the gut wall can lead to a temporary decline in lactase production. The symptoms disappear if milk or other sources of lactase are excluded from the diet or consumed only sparingly. 